Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mr. Hino with Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. Today's video, I want to deal with something that all first Lego leaguers deal with. In fact, it's number one on their list of the most frustrating and most difficult part about first Lego League, and that's the drift in their robot. Mr. Hino, we try to do our missions, but the robot just veers off and it just messes up everything that we want to do for our missions. So today what I want to do is show you guys how to program your robot using the gyro sensor to make your missions more consistent and give your team hopefully a higher score because you're more accurate. So if you want to see that, stay with me. Hino Lego Robotics. Oh yeah. Okay guys, so again, first Lego League. <sighs> Mr. Hino, we have our program but when we, when we run our robot, it just veers off. One of the motors goes faster than the other. It causes drift and everything that we had planned got messed up. So the amount of points we were expecting to get, it just doesn't happen because that robot veers off. I totally understand. I see it all the time. So today what I want to do is just, there's a lot of videos out there that just show you how to do the gyro, but then they don't explain how that actually looks like in a first Lego League mission. So today what I want to do is not only show you the program, but show you that it works on the cargo connect table because you guys have to be able to make the connection between the program and ah, that's what it looks like on the table. So today what I want to do is show you how to use your gyro sensor in a program to complete a first Lego League mission to make it more consistent and hopefully to give you guys more points if you're having frustrations like, oh, it worked yesterday, now it doesn't. Hopefully, get, we'll try to solve that and get that fixed. So let's go to the table. Okay, did you see the drift on that? So that's a whole length right here. It started off on this line and drifted all the way over to the black line. So what we wanna do is be able to correct that because just that inch here, that can mean the difference between getting a mission done and having it fail. Okay guys, my apologies for a few things. Number one, I usually would screen record on my laptop, but this is the old laptop that my students use. And that's another thing I need to apologize that we're using the old EV3 programming. So if I can figure out how to transfer this to the new EV3 software, I will. But we're using the old EV3 program here and this is basically my program to do the platooning truck. And I'm just gonna be trying to push the platooning truck and attach it to the bridge. So this gyro block right here, this is just a reset block. So all I did was click on it and go to reset. The reason why you want to reset this is we want to um, always have your gyro setting at zero. A lot of times when you're going to move your robot, your gyro setting is going to, you know, it's going to activate to whatever angle that you're uh, rotating it to. So we always want it to be zero right before we start this program here. And so I now had put this loop block in here and within the loop block we have another gyro sensor block and this is the one that's actually going to make the robot go straight here. So I have this um, for measure and angle and then I busted out a math block here. And here's the reason for the math block and here's why I set it for negative one. Um, the, the higher you're setting the more um, jagged your your corrections are going to be I didn't I wanted a pretty smooth uh, correction so I kept it at negative one so I set this for multiply and here's what's basically going to happen all of you guys that do first Lego League know that your motors are not always going to rotate at the same um, rotations which means one motor is going to go faster than another at some point and that's what causes your drift so here's what I'm, I'm going to do I put a data wire here that's going to connect into the gyro and it's going to feed the reading into this math block. So let's say that your B motor is going to go five uh, degrees faster than the other motor. So what that's going to do is that's going to, this is going to put that into the math block here and it's going to multiply it by negative one. So five times negative one would be a negative five. 
So what that's going to do is that's going to take the output here and put this into this steering block. And this 30 is going to be how fast I'm going to go um, with my robot. You guys can choose whatever number you want. So it's going to take that reading, that negative 5, and put that into the BC motors here. And it's going to make that correction. So if I'm drifting negative 5, what, what's going to happen is it will tell the BC motors, hey, we better go back five degrees from the amount of drift that we made. And then you can choose here how long you want that to happen. So um, I know that 2.2 is going to be the perfect, let me move this over here, 2.2 is going to be the perfect amount of time to line my, my robot up for the platooning trucks. Okay, everybody, so I downloaded that gyro program that just has it go straight. And I just wanted to show you something here. So I have the robot here, and you can see how it's lined up right there um, along this line right here, right there. So I know that that will get it to go straight right in between the two planes. So watch this. It should not hit either one. It should go right in between, just like that. So what's really cool about this gyro program, let me put it right back where it was. So what I can do is I can hit this and it will it'll go right back online to where I had it aimed. So that's how we know this gyro program is working is if I mess with it, it should still go back to that same point where I have it in line. So, okay, so let me line this up again. Let me show you what I'm doing to line this up. I want to line it up so that this line disappears. You can see how if I tilt it to the side. Okay, that's pretty straight. Right there. And it's a very delicate operation here. I don't, there's no real sure way to know that this is perfectly lined up, but okay, let's go with that. There might be a little bit of drift. No, that should be good. All right, let's try that. It's pretty straight. Look at that. Okay, so now that we know we have a perfectly straight line here, we're now going to put this together with a gyro turn to do the platooning trucks. Oh, I guess it'd be nice if I had one there. So for those of you that are like, Miss Hino, that's fantastic. Show us how this can be useful in a first Lego League mission. We're going to do that gyro forward. We're going to do a gyro turn and another gyro forward to put this platooning truck straight onto that bridge. And so now I'm going to make a gyro turn. So that's what the next set of blocks is going to be for. So I'm going to set my BC motors here, and I'm going to put this at 30. So the B motor is going to go for 30. Um, it's going to go at 30% motor speed. And I only want that left motor turning because I'm going to be making that right turn. And then I have my gyro block set in here. Now this is actually going to be a weight block. So all I did was I put it on for gyro and then change, and then angle. So what's gonna happen here is my robot's going to turn, and the reason, Mr. Hino, how come you don't have it at 90 degrees? Because there's gonna be a lag in the um, communication between the gyro. By the time it gets from the gyro to the brick, it actually goes past 90 degrees. It's kind of like our brains, you know, we see something and sometimes our reaction time is not, you know, split second. So I know that 82 is, is about perfect for a 90 degree turn. And so what's going to happen is the gyro is going to basically, when it turns to the right, when, it's, when it gets to 82 degrees, it's going to tell the brick, hey, we need to stop rotating. And so that's what this block is going to be here for. It's just going to stop my motors for one second. I could actually make that a 0.5, especially in first Lego League when I'm trying to get this done faster. And so it's going to stop my robot um, 
And that's going to be the perfect 90 degree angle right there. And then, um, Mr. Hino, how come you don't have a gyro to go from the, you know, after that turn straight to the platooning truck? I could, but I just wanted to show you guys how to do that forward and make that gyro turn. So I just did a 30% motor speed forward for four seconds. What I want to do is trap that platooning truck within the two white beams that I'm going to have on my attachment and push that platooning truck into the bridge. And so, again, what we're hoping for is consistency. And so what we're going to do is download this to the robot and let's watch this in action. Okay, so I have my program going forward. It's making the gyro turn. I set it for 82 because of the lag of the sensor to the brick. Um, it's not going to be a perfect 90. And then I have it going forward to hit the platooning truck and go fast enough, I guess, or forward enough to hit the bridge down too. So I know what you're thinking. Mr. Hino, the program means nothing unless it's accurate and it's consistent. So what I should be able to do is do this three times in a row getting the platooning truck right in the middle of those two white 15 hole beams. So that's where you have to put the proof of the program to the pudding here and see if it's really accurate. So let's check this out. Because in first Lego league, if it's not accurate, it's, it means nothing. So we get the, we got that platooning truck right in the middle there. So, without breaking away let's try to do this again that's what i tell my teams i say hey if you can do it three times in a row then we know it's consistent but consistently every day so let's try that again because we don't like to go to a competition and then have this be you know and there we go so there's two times in a row Let's try it for a third time because that's what we're looking for in first Lego League. We're just looking for consistency. We want to make sure this works every time. So let's try this a third time. And it gets it in the middle of that every time. And that's what we're looking for. We're just looking for a consistent program that we can rely on, that we can trust and go, hey, this is the big thing for First Lego League. If we're going to be more surprised if it doesn't work than if it does, you should not be going to a First Lego League going, I hope this works. You know, we'll be surprised if it works. You should be surprised if it doesn't work. That's how confident we should be in our programs. So this one here, pretty confident. And again, we would be surprised if this mission did not work. Okay, guys. So hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that you know, especially for the short missions. Now, long missions, a lot of things can go wrong, especially with attachments and using other motors. But hopefully this is a good start for you guys. If it's just a short trip, like the platooning truck, like possibly the cargo plane, where you can just, you just want to get that accuracy and then start moving up to farther, you know, more difficult programs and because the mission is farther away. So again, I totally understand the frustration of seeing that robot drift. You think you have it lined up perfectly and it's starting to go off and you're like, no, that's not going to get us what we wanted. Hopefully today you, you, know, you can get a little bit more stability in your programs and a, definitely a lot more confidence in what you're doing on that first LEGO League table. Okay, guys? All right, I'm Mr. Hino from Seals LEGO Robotics. I'm out. He's out. He's out. We got this. We got this. We got this, guys. Hey, guys, Mr. Hino here. Thank you so much for watching. And if you love robotics, don't forget to check out these videos also because they're cool. Okay, guys, take care.